Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Joel, and this is A Stable Life. Well, guys, look at how good this wall dried down. Look at how good it looks. Man. See, are we dry? We're dry. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That is really awesome to see. This wall came out so good. Ooh Exciting stuff. I am here early on this beautiful Menorah Day. We're going to get started with measuring out all of the grain. And then I gotta get all the muck buckets out of the stalls. Because Gavin's not gonna be here for at least an hour. And I also see Daniel just pulled in. I gotta go talk to him quick. Let's go have a conversation with Veggie Boy Daniel. Just the person I wanted to talk to. I understand you mowed hay yesterday. Yeah, I just mowed up out. So you mowed cow hay? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what I was up here to find out. I was like, do we have horse hay? Is it cow hay? I figured I would have known if it was horse hay. You round baling it? Yep. Also nice. Are you planting corn today? Yep. Also nice. All right, I'll let you go. We had to get that answered, guys, because I was so curious if we had horse hay land. In case you guys are wondering, because sometimes it gets a little confusing, the Veggie Boys own the hay fields that we use and they make the hay and then sell it to us. We are a family operation, but we're also a business. So it needs to work out for both the Veggie Boys and us. I'm usually included in the process of making hay because I also work on the Veggie Boys farm. And it's nice that I have a little bit of control in regards to how the hay looks. A lot of people that buy hay rarely get that opportunity. And it also looks like we're all the way down here. There we are. Can't forget our little treat for William. Gotta make sure he's eating those pills. So there you go. I hope that clears things up. Well, let's get started measuring out. All the muck buckets are out of the stalls. All the grain is in the stalls. And for the horses that need that extra bit of hay, they got it. Which means it's time to let in the horses. Today is going to be a nice day. Beautiful weather is what we're forecasted. And taking a look, we can see the donkeys are ready for some food. So it's just a matter of giving the donkeys their food, setting up the stall for Tucker, and letting them in. Horses look all good this morning, which is to be expected. The weather is just beautiful outside. Not too hot, not too cold, nice and sunny. Yeah, good morning, Roni. Morning, Jack. Morning, Rebel. Morning, Champ. Hey, George. Hey, William. Hey, Casino. As you guys can see, putting the treat in William's grain is doing good. He looks like he's walking a lot better. Right, Casino? Oh, very nice. Very nice. It's big field time. Hey, Danny. Hey, Fire. Declan. Suede. Skywalker. Obi. Sriracha or Poncho. That's Sriracha. Uh, yeah. No, Sriracha was up front, then it was Poncho. They got me together there. Archer, Duke, they were tricking me out. Hey, Tucker. Hey, Gavin. Weather. Samson. Argento. Danny and Docs. Let's see how they all did. I stand corrected. That was Poe, not Danny. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, Poe. Sorry, Danny. Well, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This has been one of the smoothest feedings that I have ever had. Every single horse went right to their stalls. Absolutely no issues to speak of whatsoever. And it's nice out. You can even see the hay is laying up there. That's for cows, though, from what I understand. So good stuff. Howdy, Tucker. Sorry, buddy. You're going to stay in the stall for this morning. After all, it is manure. Wow. There's like nothing in there. I think one of those wagons has like barely something, which makes sense. Poncho not being in this field overnight no longer needs to be cleaned as much and Tucker's only ever in it for a stall. So that means that all the manure that's in these runs currently is just donkey and they don't make too much, especially when you compare them to a horse. Hey, did you hit that like button yet? Now, since we are moving further into summer, that does mean that our routine has changed just a little. Sunscreens and fly sprays have become the norm. For any of the horses that have a pink nose, we're gonna be putting on some sunscreen, and a couple of the horses, the clients would like fly sprayed. So let's put on our gloves and get to doing the daily care. Let me tell you guys, putting on a glove when it's 90 degrees outside, oh, 
let me tell you, that is just the worst. The glove sticks to your hand and it just does not go on properly. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's not 90 degrees, but my hands are starting to get a little clammy, which tells me it's getting warmer outside. All right, looks like the first horse we're sunscreening is gonna be Gavin. Gonna be, looks like we're gonna be using SPF 50 for Gavin's nose. He's only got a little bit of pink, so we only need a little bit. Hey, Gavin. There you go. There you go, Gavin, good boy. Good boy. Okay, looks like the next one is gonna be George. Sunscreen, fly spray, and fly mask. Man, look how full George's board is. Wowie, George, wowie. When we're fly spraying the horses, we're mainly working on trying to get their underbodies near their boot, their legs, and their back. Their tail does a really good job of swatting all the flies in this general area. And it's pretty incredible seeing them use their tails to swat flies away. That's gonna be something I gotta try to get on film because it's actually pretty cool to see. I think Champ is a, a good example here. You can see he's got that pink nose and what it looks like his hair is actually the sunscreen coming all the way down. They actually really do tend to get sunburned on those pink areas and that sunburn will blister. And you have to remember that these areas right here is their fingers. So if that's all blistered, it's harder for them to eat. It's harder for them to eat. We start noticing weight problems, energy problems, all of those things come into factor. Just a simple little fix, like putting sunscreen on the horse before they go out on a sunny day, prevents us from having all of those issues. And next up for our morning routine, we're gonna need to be working on manure. Now this is a job that usually Gavin handles while I'm taking hay out. But if you guys haven't noticed, Gavin's not here yet today. I got word from Gavin himself that he wasn't feeling too well, and so he is staying home for the day. Gavin, we're hoping you get some good rest, and we're hoping that you feel better. So that means that for today, it's pretty much gonna be just Leia and I. We'll see how much work we're able to get done. <sighs> gonna go get started in the left run first. That way once those wagons are empty, we can let Tucker out of his stall. That way he can at least stretch his legs a little bit while he's in the left run. Well, looks like both of these wagons got just about a little bit left. We'll take them on up into the barn and dump a few muck buckets in and see how it looks. Also, I just thought I'd point out that the water troughs are all looking good. Everything's doing well. Even this one that had a leak is not leaking anymore. We, we don't really know how that happened. Usually a problem that fixes itself will show up eventually. So I expect this to just start leaking, but for now it's good, which is nice. say the big field doesn't need any hay. taken care of, we can now let all these guys out. Which I think they definitely want to get out of their stalls, right Declan? All right, and then we can get started for the day. Since we don't have Gavin with us, uh, today it might turn out to be a little different. I was planning on getting some big projects accomplished today, so we're gonna have to work smarter since it's just myself, but uh, I think we'll be able to get still a lot accomplished. Get him out, Leia. <laughs> Wow, good job, Scoots. Well done. See any others hiding in the corners? I don't think so. Awesome. All the horses are out. As you guys can see, Leia's getting a nice little drink of water. And Weather is now in the middle field. That right down there is Tucker. I don't know if you can see Weather. He's just to the left of that run-in shed down there. Okay, only thing left to do for morning feeding is let the donkeys into both runs. Okay guys, you're good to go. Now that's a sight, guys. That is just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. 
Man, oh man. I don't know about you guys, but I could stare at this for hours. Let's go talk about what we need to start working on for today. It's little moments like that that just make you appreciate your job that much more. Reminds you why you're doing all this work. Remember guys, even though you may have a stressful day, things may be really challenging and hard. I, don't, I know all of you are going through a lot. Just remember to stop and smell the roses. Because sometimes, they smell really good. Now you guys are well aware that this is going to be the new feed room. A lot of you are also aware of how we currently buy our feed in bags. We will put the pallet down, walk the bags into the existing feed room and fill up the feed bins. There's a reason why the feed room is the first project of all of the projects that we're working on this year. We have officially made a change. We're trying something new and we're really excited about it. And oddly enough, that takes us over to the Veggie Boy shop to this giant bag right here. This bag is our new horse feed. And this feed is going to be what's replacing our current Calm Ultra. We partnered with a new company and we had a horse nutritionist look over everything for our horses. And we are really excited about trying out this feed. We are getting it in bulk, which definitely gives us some extra savings. Those savings actually equate to as if we got a new client at our stable. And definitely something that I have always been taught and learned is that if you're able to save some money here and there, that's a lot better than having to work a lot harder to try to make up more. Those savings we are directly passing into the projects. So we're trying to do a domino effect where we save money at the start and that's able to fuel the projects moving down, which may the life of every horse and client at our stable better. Now you might be asking, Joel, how does switching your feed make the lives of your clients better? An easy answer to that question is that people like their horses being kept at clean, orderly, and good looking stables. That's just a fact. Making this look clean, orderly, and nice will definitely be a huge facelift to the entire stable, since this feed room is pretty much at the heart of our facility. Not to mention, we're not making this just about us. As we mentioned, we're adding in that little area over here on the side for everyone to take a break, which we've gotten some really good feedback about that. A lot of our clients are very excited for that to come in. We're gonna be moving the steps here, we're gonna be putting in a nice little break area here, and then the feed room will go here. We're leveling the ground off, as you guys are well aware of. And lastly, this is something that I'm personally really excited about. I'm going to be able to take the tractor, drive it straight into the feed room, unload the grain from the tote directly into the feed bins. So now the only bagged feed that we're gonna be getting is those smaller grains that we get for those horses that have a particular needed feed. We got the center block painted and it looks like we might have started something because now everybody's suggesting that we paint all the center block in our stable. And I don't know about you guys, but I definitely would agree I'd make the stable look really nice, but we'll see. Time will tell on that one. The next thing that I need to be working on is the ground inside this area. So we're gonna be getting some fill and leveling this all off, and then we'll move the feed bins in. The reason why I'm putting the fill in first, this ground is definitely uneven. I don't want my mom to trip and fall in here, especially when you're looking at the feed bins and you're moving back and forth trying to measure out the grain. Last thing I need is her falling and getting hurt. So we wanna level this ground all off to get it ready for us to put the mats in. We don't have the mats ordered yet, but that will be the next phase in getting the ground ready. Got our first bucket load of fill. I haven't decided whether or not I wanna run the fill back and forth with the tractor or get the quad in the wagon and just load the wagon with the tractor. I don't know yet. Time will tell. Now I'm gonna need to move these two stall mats and the dirt is gonna start right at this corner. And we're gonna make it straight level going all the way in to here. And then I think what I'll do is I'm gonna use the tractor and I'm gonna dump a couple big loads of dirt in here. And then for the rest of it, I'm gonna use the wagon to come in and we'll use the wagon to kind of put the dirt where we need it. Fun fact for you, each of these stall mats weighs 95 pounds. Now 
Now, I definitely don't know how many cubic feet that bucket holds, but that's a pretty good amount of dirt. I think uh, maybe three bucket loads on this side, and then I'm probably gonna need a couple on this side, but I won't be able to get in that side with the tractor, so that'll all be with the wagon. So it's looking like we're gonna get two more bucket loads up here, and then the rest we'll do with the wagon. Three bucket loads of dirt later, and this is where we are. I'm gonna get started shoveling and raking. I gotta rake all the trash out of this, and that'll be taken out of here. And we're gonna level off the dirt. Got my level. So we're gonna be putting a soft layer in coming up over here and moving our way out. Got about 20 minutes till lunch, so let's see how much we get done in 20 minutes. Okay, well, it is now lunchtime, and this is how things look. Pretty good, we put the level on it, and we're level right to here. That square right there is level. I need a little bit more to fill in the corner there and a little bit more to fill in back here and a lot more to fill in over here. So far, so good. What do you think, Pete? I think it looks good. Thank you, Pete. Let's get some lunch. In case you guys are curious what's on the lunch menu for today, we've got some pretzels with some dip, a grilled cheese sandwich, and I grabbed just a few pickles. Uh, the tractor coming in here with the bucket, I'm not able to really turn it. I can dump a lot more dirt on this section here and then shovel it over. But I, do necess I don't necessarily think that would be the wisest choice to do because of time and the fact that I'm on my own. So I think I'm gonna get the four-wheeler and the wagon and I'll use the wagon to bring the dirt back and forth, use the tractor to load, and then we'll shovel the dirt where we need it and that way I can dump the dirt where I need it inside. Be a little bit more physically intensive than just using the tractor, but hey, gets the job done. to say that this is about as heavy as this wagon can hold. Ooh, I got it. Pretty good, leveled out. The only thing I don't like about this wagon is when you dump it, it pretty much holds everything in it. So we're gonna have to unload this part by hand. But because we're doing it by hand, that means we can put dirt exactly where we want. So far, so good, guys. You can see up here, we really only had to put down a quarter of an inch of dirt to get things level. And then we had to pick it up, up to the point where we're putting in about a foot and a half of dirt in the deeper sections to really level things off. Well, guys, here's the state of things currently. I only need one more bucket load of dirt right there, and then things should be good to go. As you can see, I got some extra help. I realized doing things with that wagon, though I could be more precise, I'd be here till 6 p.m. and I still would have to feed horses. And I just don't have that kind of time. So I've been using the skid steer to push the dirt in. Of course, I'm still raking it by hand, but things are doing good. What do you think, guys? I think that looks really good down there. Of course, I'll give you guys a closer look in a second when it's done. Okay, last bucket load of dirt is here. Park my tractor and park the skid steer. All I got left is the shovel and the rake. Man, look at this. That looks so much better. And then once the mats are on this, this is gonna look immaculate. Absolutely immaculate. Whew, it might take a little. Ah, that looks good. Okay, well that was a long enough break. Ah, I gotta get feeding horses for the afternoon. Guys, things are looking good. Things are shaping up nice. So believe it or not, I have afternoon feeding done and all of the horses turned out. I got about 20 minutes till I need to go. As you guys are well aware, this is not done. Just another step moving forward. We still have to get stall mats and put stall mats in here. We still have to put up our handrail that's going to go along the top to prevent anyone from falling down. And then, of course, we need to move all the feed bins in here. And then, of course, I will be able to take the tractor and drop the grain from the top right down into the feed bins, making getting grain that much nicer. However, none of those things are in place yet. Our grain has arrived and is here in the format for that. 
we need to be starting to mix this into our feed to get our horses used to it. Even though it's the same ingredients, the same minerals, it is made in a slightly different way. So we wanna make sure that the horses are used to the new grain. And in order to do that, we need to mix it. And in order to mix it, I need to get part of that feed into the feed room. So the plan is I'm going to take this grain, scoop it up with the bucket and fill it up and then take it by bucket down into one of those feed bins just for today. And I'll just fill up one, that way we can get started on feeding this grain. How many five gallon buckets does it take to fill up a feed bin? Looks like the answer is 14. Honestly, it's incredible how similar they look. You can tell this one's got a bit of a greener greener tint to it than this one. But this one is made from, a, from the company called Tribute. And this is made right here in Pennsylvania, local. Ain't that crazy. We're excited to try it out, see how it goes. I ran out of time for today, otherwise I would have filled up more of these bins. This will do, tomorrow is going to be our first day implementing this feed into our feed routine. That is exciting. It's been a busy one. I don't know about you, but I'm a little tired. For anyone that's wondering, this is not final. We're going to level this out as we're putting the mats in to make sure that it's completely level. But this is very good for now, especially as the dirt settles a little bit. And that's why all the tools are still here. Next up is gonna be wood mats. Exciting stuff. Thanks for watching. If you haven't, don't forget to hit that like button and make sure that you're subscribed. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.